I would argue that we're, we're entering, and we have entered here in the US, the golden age of professionally produced uh, video content. Never before have there been so many different ways and different places that you can view the best programming, the best sitcoms or dramas or movies or sports events. And the number of hours that the average consumer is uh, using to, to view that content has also gone up very, very significantly. And that's partly because of multitasking and it's partly because the human, the human mind is just able to consume more and more entertainment. From a research perspective, um, we're able to trap all of that viewing. So one of the big trends over the last couple of years has been this explosion in data. So the amount of information available on a particular consumer or a particular household or a particular geography or demographic. And that provides an opportunity for much more precision marketing. The television screen, according to our research here at Nielsen, is still very important. I think that's going to continue because it is a very compelling way to get a message across. So I think there'll be a vibrant television industry in 2020, but I think it's going to be very different. I think it'll be much more personalized, it'll be much more on demand, and it's going to be seamlessly integrated with the rest of my media environment. So most of the television manufacturers are enabling uh, IP connections direct into the TV. It enables the television to be a much more interactive device. The big question on this one, though, is to what extent people want to lean back and enjoy an entertainment experience versus lean forward and be typing on a keyboard or working with a remote control or even voice recognition. You know, because I think that's the limit to how far IPTV will be taken, at least in its first phase. One of the, the interesting things that we saw recently was that one of the sports networks here in the US, they're experimenting with just showing you the game with no commentary, no scores, uh, no interruption whatsoever, just the game and the sounds of the ballpark versus all of the graphics and, and, and overlays. And uh, you know, what, what that prompted to me was the idea that up on the screen I want the movie or the game or the sitcom uninterrupted on high def and in my lap that's where I want to be interacting. And I want those two experiences uh, uh, to be quite different, but able to be interoperable. And the question really comes down to the consumer. So in other words, he or she will be able to tailor their television experience, depending on whether they want a very cluttered screen or whether they want the pure experience of just sitting at the ground by themselves. So the rise of, of interactive TV has put greater onus on marketers to be more entertaining and more compelling. There's lots of experiments going around that are being driven by brands. My sense is that television will be um, the best way to reach very large audiences in an unduplicated way, firstly. And secondly, you can convey full screen, full motion video and elicit an emotional response. I don't see that changing over time. I think it's going to need to morph to be more personalised and more interactive, but it is unparalleled in its ability to leave a consumer with a particular impression. The question as to whether the television will become a place of commerce, T-commerce or uh, uh, e-commerce, um, has been out there for a long period of time. My bet is um, that will continue to uh, be a, something of the future. And the reason is that it's, a, it's an interruptive experience. And I'm prepared to be interrupted with a laptop or a smartphone or a tablet that sits on my lap, but I don't think it'll go as far as uh, electronic commerce through the TV. The process of discovering a new show, um, I think, has changed over time. My guess is over the next 18 to 24 months, social media will become the single most important form of television content discoveries. So for television producers and aggregators, you've got to get into that social stream and make sure that your new programs are being talked about and, and the, the benefits are being amplified across that community. And if you think about what, where that might go from a broader television and video landscape, I think it's pretty exciting. Social media may in fact be one of the great boons or positives for the television industry because it enhances the television experience, makes it more interactive, brings more people in and provides a very, very rich source of recommendation. So when you add up a number of these trends, the viewer is now, is now in control much more than he or she has ever been. And the, the broadcast and cable networks that understand that and harness the power of the viewer will do extremely well. The, the opportunities to monetize great content is just exploding. So it's pretty exciting, I think, from a marketing standpoint, and in fact, for, for, for the programmers themselves.